Welcome to the final mission of Chernobylite. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the best possible ending, but also some other important choices and outcomes you can make at the end of the game so you guys can see how it affects the ending. And the ending to Chernobylite is really like Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3 where there's this really interesting summary based on all the choices and changes you made throughout your playthrough. So it's going to be a really exciting episode, especially because we still have all of the companions for the final heist mission. So before we start the heist mission and I show you guys the best roles for each companion, let me just tell you the previous episodes are all in the playlist linked below if you've missed them. From this point onwards, there's some big story spoilers if you've not seen or played the rest of the game for yourself. So understandably, bear that in mind. And now let's continue. We'll go over to the heist board and we can see our full team. And now we're going to select the roles of our team for the heist mission. But before we start, if you've enjoyed this playthrough, please do drop a like on the video. It really helps support us. Everyone, it's time to hit the power plant. We all know it's not going to be easy. We tried before and not everyone made it. But this time we're smarter and better prepared. I know we can do this. We have to do this. It's the only way we can find Tachana and end NAR. Mousy, you're talking about striking at the heart of the Rat King. But have you learned everything possible about his plans? I have evidence that NAR was conducting Chernobylite experiments back in the 90s. Tachana and her baby were two of their subjects, with the rate at which their technology is progressing. Soon, nothing will be able to stop them. We must act now. But are you lagging in games and getting slow internet speeds at peak times? Well, your internet provider might be throttling your internet speeds. Don't worry though, today's sponsor, Surfshark, can help you out. Surfshark is a VPN for PC and mobile that encrypts your internet traffic from your device so your internet provider doesn't know how much bandwidth you're using and so cannot limit your usage. You can even share your one account between unlimited devices and people. And if you're using YouTube, Netflix or even Disney Plus, you can change your country location to access country locked content, which means you can watch Friends or The Office no matter where you live in the world. Surfshark will also change your IP to protect your identity, location, search history and passwords. But don't take my word for it. Use my code ESO to get 83% off plus free extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day back money guarantee so there's really no risk in trying it out for yourself right now using the link in the description. What about that black mask wearing motherfucker? Have you identified him? His name is Boris Glukov. He, Tatiana, and I were close friends until he betrayed us. He helped the KGB gather evidence against Tatiana, then continued to work for NAR after my accident. He experimented on himself with Chernobylite and ended up with great power. He's strong, one of the strongest, but we can beat him together. Do you know what NAR is actually doing at the power plant? Why is it so important? And what does it have to do with Tatiana? NAR wants to create a permanent wormhole to the Chernobylite world and get to its source. Tatiana's abilities are needed to support the space-time bridge. It's hard to know what happens if they succeed. But what they're doing is unbelievably risky. They could unleash something horrific on this world or become unstoppable themselves. But we're never going to know the outcome. Because we're going to stop them. I like the pep talk, Professor. I think you even gave me a bit of a job. But do we have the right tools for the job? Yes, we do. We've got everything we need to infiltrate the power plant. This is much bigger than anything any of us has done before. If you want to back out, this is your chance. One organization holding this much power is against everything I believe in. And besides, this is personal for me. Count me in. You know how I feel. The Rat King must be stopped at all costs, Mousy. I'm in. I started out doing this for a paycheck, but I'm going to end it for my brother in arms, for Anton. Let's do this. Whatever it takes to protect my people and drive NAR out, I'm on board. You think I'm gonna back out now and miss the best part? Fuck no, I'm with you, Igor. I appreciate your trust. We can't count on the element of surprise, but we know enough about NAR's vulnerabilities to make this work. Time and again, NAR has shown they would rather capture than kill me. 
We can use this to our advantage. We'll dress somebody up as an NAR officer, escorting a prisoner. Me. That's our ticket inside. We have two NAR uniforms, both male. Any takers? I'll do it. I have no problem posing as an NAR officer. My hand is still giving me trouble, but I can deal with it. You should take someone who can keep his cool when things go sideways, as they inevitably do. Trust me on that. You're not seriously thinking about going without me? I'm a blast at parties. Ask anyone. So now we get the choice of who we want to take with us on the role of being an NAR soldier. Now each character in the team, if you've got the whole team up until the end of the game, like I did in my playthrough, will have a specific role that they're best suited for. So Olivier, for example, he's the obvious choice because of his military background, so he's going to make for a good officer. He's going to know how to act. All right, we still have one more uniform. Any takers? So the second choice is going to be Sashko because Mikkel is going to fulfill another role better later on. NAR must have upgraded its digital defense perimeter and surveillance system by now. A skillful hacker should be able to at least temporarily disable them. I'm your man, Mousy. The great rat catcher has blessed me with a knack for that kind of thing. Electronics, surveillance, computers. There's no one better than me. I wouldn't call myself a black hat, but I know enough. As long as we don't get into serious stuff, I should do fine. So the obvious choice here is definitely hands down Tarakan. His vast experience in tech and electronics will come in handy. Not Olga. Olga's better suited to a sniper position, which we'll get to. I need someone to cover our asses in case we end up in the shit. Someone who can take down a target from a distance, or at least create a diversion. Firearms are my preferred method of solving problems, but I can definitely distract them. My shooting's impaired since I injured my hand, but I can manage. What's there to consider? I'm your gal, Igor. Indeed. Quite ironically though, Olivier, a one-handed rifleman, not ideal, but more experience counts for something. No, Olga is the best point. Olga is the best choice. There's no point in arguing. Olga is the best shot in our team. So we're going to go with her for this role. Last but not least, a spy. I want someone to monitor NAR activities and keep us informed about their moves. I've been watching these assholes fight the reflection for years. I know how they think. I'm your guy. I know the power plant like a boy knows the woods behind his house. Let me take care of it. So Tarakan would probably be pretty good in this role, but he's the best technician hacker we have. So Mikhail is going to go into this slot. He spent so much time wrestling with the NAR, he knows how they think. Indeed, he lost lots of his friends to them. So here we go. Does everyone know what to do? Last chance to reconsider. Confirm your choices, or obviously you can change, or you can just give up. Confirm. This is it, my love. The last stretch. You've been through so much for me. Make sure you're ready, because it will take everything you have. Your wits, your strength, your plan, your companion's loyalty. Everything. Good luck, my love. Here we go. Drop a like on the video if you haven't already, guys. It really helps me out. This is it. Today's the day. Whatever happens. Dude, this is gonna be fun. Everything's sorted, guys. Can we start our prisoner escort up? I'm ready. Though my hand still hurts like hell. If the uniform doesn't get us in, we have one more ace up our sleeve. Their friend enemy password. They say, we quell the storm. And we reply, and ride the thunder. Remember it. Before we enter the lion's den, I need to triple check everything is ready. How's my tech? Have you logged into their system? I'm in, Mousy. What do you need me to do? I will let their systems bypass security. You ask and I'll do it. But don't be rash. Once we get started, it's only a matter of time before they kick me out again. Spy check. How are my eyes and ears? Eyes are bright and my ears are wide open. I got the plans and codes up and I can hear those boring fuckers chatter like they were sitting in my lap. No worries, Igor. With me on your side, this will be like walking to the grocery store. <laughs> Sniper, are you in position? Have you got eyes on? I'm all set, Igor, and I feel good. This is just like my hunting days. I could shoot the fly off your lapel.
There are a few sentries outside the gate. That's obstacle number one. Taking them out quickly is certainly an option. And with the silencer, I should be able to keep my position. It's your call, Igor. Better use the side passage for now. You can always kill them on your way out. <laughs> Don't forget that you're a prisoner, Igor. Downcast. Hopeless. Use this to our advantage. I agree. I think we could take them out with a sniper, but we don't know if other guards will replace them on rotation. We could alternatively find another route into the compound, but right now, since we've gone to so much effort to have this prisoner roleplay, I think that's going to be our best plan going forward to see how far we can get into the facility till we get held up. Okay, showtime. This better work. I mean, it's pretty cool that we have all the options because we have the whole team together. Definitely the kind of game you want to play through twice. So. Oh, who goes there? Stand down, Private, and clear the way. I'm escorting this stalker to his interrogation. Yeah, I mean, yes, sir. Uh, you can find the brass in the tent behind the gates. I assume you know the way? It looks like these officer uniforms have really paid off. We immediately got access there without any questions being asked, just because we looked apart. So far, so good. But it's getting harder now. NAR's upgraded some of the old security features. The electronics are the least of your worries. Nobody said anything about this exposed courtyard. You stand out like a signal flare at a funeral week, or be extra careful. There's a lot of stuff to loot around here as well, but I've come pretty well armed. Need to check. I've got anti-rads. We don't have any radiation, though, so we should be fine going through here. Security checkpoint. What used to be a radiation detector is now a biometric scanner. Clever. Ah. I already found the right database. I'll upload your biometric data, and you can walk right through. Smart. I can't get a line of sight on all of them. Maybe I should target those fuel tanks on the far side of the gates. That'll no. keep them distracted long enough for you to slip past. But if we do that, I'll have to fall back from this position. Those NAR security systems can be broken by someone with enough know-how. Those IT wankers probably spent their upgrade budget on porn hub premium content. Once those gates read my biometrics, my cover will be blown. We need to convince them somehow that we're friendlies. Very true. Okay, so we've got three options here. Create a diversion means that we'd lose our sniping point and we'd create a massive explosion, probably set the alarms off. Really bad idea. Um, disregard security and just set the alarms off. <laughs> that That's not what we want to do. Overload the gate seems like the best call here. Time for the chosen technician to do some magic. Tarakan, I like your thinking. One moment. Yes. Done and done. Those gates won't be a problem, Mousy. Time to move. With a little luck, they won't notice us. Fingers crossed. And we're in. The stealth mission is very successful so far, guys. I mean, there's a few little components on the tables here, but I mean, nothing I actually need. So we're just going to carry on going further into the facility. The entrance should be very close. It's a large metal door to the tech access corridor. Nothing I can't handle. Remember the charges I prepare for breaching security doors. Powerful, but quiet. Like sticking a curling iron into a pound of butter. Or maybe you want to save them for later. Hmm, so there's a, there's a hint that saving the charges for later instead of using them on this door is a good idea. Keep your hand down, Igor. There's a fucking sniper on the building above you. Stop yelling. How do you know? Picked it up on the radio. They haven't made you yet, but if you trigger the alarm, they'll come down on you like a swarm of Katyushas. Damn. If I force the lock, it'll trigger the alarm. This will be tough. I can try to remotely unlock the door without tripping the alarm, but no guarantees. You'll have to move very quickly, Mousy. 
Well, you put that guy on the platform to sleep, then you can make as much noise as you want. Ah. The lock is wired to the alarm system. But Sashko's charges will destroy both the lock and the trigger mechanism. I should be fine. So we got four options. Hack the lock by yourself. Don't know what would happen. Quietly burn through the lock. Obviously that's a choice, but the charges may come in handy later. It seemed like that was hinted at by Sashko for a reason. Kill the sniper. We can't take any chances. We have to eliminate the threat immediately. And Olga can do it stealthily, so I feel like that's the best choice here. Or bypass the, the door electronically. I don't care about the alarm. The technician must open the lock. So that will trigger the alarm though. So it's probably not what we want to do because we'll end up in combat. So kill the sniper, maintain stealth. All right, Olga. Do it. Bullseye! Easy. Nice shot, Jesus. She's probably not going to be any more use inside the comp building anyway. She can't see us anymore, so probably good to use her just there now the alarm's going off i think we are fine because no one's watching this area we made it inside we're safe at least for now these tunnels just about make a beeline to the reactor from there the way to the arc should be easy what the fuck the electronics are sizzling as if they're going to explode that's to be expected mousy the power plant's electrical system is antiquated falling apart we should find a way to short circuit the power. Okay, we'll have a look around and see if we can find anything that we can use to short circuit it. That team's going this way, so we'll just follow along. Igor, the water is electrified. Don't touch it. Yeah, I can, I can tell. That doesn't look good. All right, so this looks like how we're going to short circuit it. I have access to the circuit board. Perhaps I can cut power to the nearest corridor. Good shout. Have you been listening, Mousy? I can turn off the entire sector remotely. No problem. I'll only leave the light on at your location. Oh. I can't shoot the switchboard, can I? I? I would have to go there in person, which would almost certainly compromise my position. I'll be out of the game after that. <laughs> Why would you walk over there to shoot it? I'm not a proper tech guy, but how hard could it be? So I just turn it off myself. Sabotage the power. No, because then she'd lose her position. I think the technician is the best choice here. He knows what it's doing, and he can also turn out the lights for the rest of the facility, which is going to help us out. Tarakan, I like your thinking. Today, the darkness is our friend, Mousy. You're completely now safe. Got my light anyway, just in case. Well, that was a. Wait, is that a body? That's no, just a jumble of clothing. Getting a bit tense as we're going through here. Deeper into the power plant, where the Chernobylites and the mutants are running rampant. Got my gas mask with me, so we may need it soon, to be honest. Don't really know what to expect, eh? Where the hell have they all gone? They've like run off a mile away. Here they are. Waiting here. I was a little bit creeped out walking down that long ass corridor. We're getting close to the reactor floor. I think we managed to dodge the main security detail. As long as we maintain our cover, we should be good. Step very fucking lightly now, Igor. The place is swarming with those cocksuckers. NAR has beefed up security around ARC for some reason. Either they're preparing for something, or you're walking straight into a goddamn trap. Now, we do know that they had increased the security a lot since we last came, so... Here we go. I'm in the Golden Corridor. It looks like NAR beefed up security after our little escapade. Not unexpected. Mm -hmm. Don't be a fool, Igor. Let me take care of it. If I can take them all down silently, they'll be dead before they know what hit them. 
We have to convince NAR that we're their contractors. That's our ticket inside. I think we should still go. Hmm. We could still play the prisoner role. Or we could let Olga take them out. But there's two of them, so I feel like that's not going to be an option. We've come too far to take any chances. Disguise is our best option we prepared for this. I mean, we've still got the pass phrase that we got from Kevlov. Keslov. Let's try the prisoner escort charade. Just act bored. Stop right there. I don't recognize you, soldier. We quell the storm? And ride the thunder. Prisoner transport in progress, Private. Okay, go ahead. Lucky we didn't snipe. I wrote this three people just here. Four people. I okay. Yeah. Highly secure facility. Stealth was definitely our best option here. This is where it all went down the golden corridor. And check over here. No other doors to open. Alright, let's go in here then. Damn! We need to get past these scientists. I can help you, Gore. You don't need sniper cover at this point anyway. I'll come closer and see if I can stir up some trouble and get the scientists to evacuate. That'll clear the area if necessary. The Brainiacs have their own dedicated comms. I can put my fabulous acting skills to work and tell them to fuck off, but it's a two-man job. The Great Rat Catcher has smiled upon you today. I can help. They're not soldiers. They won't buy our fairy tale. If we don't come up with something convincing, they'll sound the alarm the moment they see us. Cut the power. Let's try and slip past like ghosts in the night. I mean, I can see guards up here, down there, and scientists. Agree to the spy plan. I should ask my technician for assistance. We're getting closer. Time for the final leg of my journey. Let's go inside and just screw it. I'm tempted to cut the power at this point. I reckon sneaking past could be our best option. However, I am tempted to agree to this spy plan and see what happens. Tarakan, I like your thinking. Sounds good, Mercy. It shouldn't take long to hack the comms. Attention! Nemanja! Arthung! The reactor's about to explode! Run for your lives, everyone! What kind of nonsense is this? The reactor cannot ex... Fuck it, Anatolia. A break is a break. <laughs> Luckily, they didn't come out this way. We cleared the room. Temporarily. Quickly save the game. Damn, here we are again. Checking the exits. Going deeper still. Tatiana should be in this plant somewhere. These old ventilation ducts will take me straight to the Ark. The ventilation ducts, eh? Okay, well, let's what go. What the hell is this? Was it here before? Looks like some sci fi fucking movie prop. The door is trapped. Touch it and I'll spend my last moments on Earth convulsing on the dirty floor. This door wasn't supposed to be here. Mousy, the ventilation duct should not be secured. The Red King is watching and waiting. I can feel it. The main generator is in sight. If I sabotage it, you'll have a few moments before the backup comes online. Wait, Igor! Remember the map you borrowed from that fucker Semenov? It shows another way in. Guess it was worth it in the end, huh? Sashko's explosives might come in handy now. Ah, ooh. Blow up the doors yourself. Fortunately, fortunately, I know how to use explosives. I think I can knock down the doors without anyone's help. Just open the doors yourself, which we could try. I feel like we would die. Everything's wired up here. It looks very dangerous. Use the alternate passage. We have the map that we got from Semenov on the hospital building. I feel like we might as well use that, to be honest. Just keep the charges, since this is an option, but it might still be locked. Your plan sounds reasonable, Mikhail. 
Do it. The doors are behind you, Igor. Cut through the crap on the other side, and you'll find a nice, fat ventilation duct. Climb up in there, and it'll take you straight to the Ark. Ventilation duct. Let's do it. Oh, it's just here. Okay. I assume the rest of the team's going to follow me. Let's pull that off the wall. Didn't secure this though, did you? Oh yeah, they're coming with us. Dude looks terrifying when he's crawling like Gollum or something. Oh, those are enemies for a moment. I was like, oh, they've got me. <laughs> We're good though. The mobilite's even stronger around here. I need to be careful of mutants spawning in. Yep, there's some. Stuck in their cells, though. Strangely enough. Are you seeing those creatures? I hope the bars hold. Indeed. I don't know if there's a release for them, but we should really be careful. Right, so where's this taking us? I might be able to open the gate from this panel, but there's a chance I'll release the things in those cages as well. Do you still have some of my explosives? Would really come in handy about now. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is the heart of darkness. Just as menacing as I imagined it to be, I will gladly burn it all to the ground. The NAR will track me down afterwards, but I don't care. I have reached my destination, Igor. This place is one big fucking trap and totally off grid. The only way to open it from where you are is to crash the whole system. Unless you have some explosives. The Ark is just outside. Luckily, I still have some of Sasko's explosives. I can put them to good use here. Dude, there's no way we'd reveal Tarakan. You would actually die if we chose that option. Blast your way through or hack your way out. Yeah, blast your way through. Thank God we kept Sashka's explosives. There were like three separate times we could have used them. This is the one though. All right, we're taking this gate down. It's like a wooden door though, right? Look, like it's slightly, the door's open anyway. You just opened it, mate. Just it. Unnecessary. <laughs> Oh, nice. That is very silent. Okay. Let's go, team. Jesus. Wow. You heard the man move! The priority is to protect the lab! Damn. Looks like we'll have to fight our way out. Enemies over there. Can we sneak this, or...? Okay, there's a lot of guys over there. These guys are the last thing standing between me and Tatiana. I can't back down now. I'll fight my way in if I have to. I've got an idea, Igor. I know a way to turn this around. Mm. There's still some charges left. I can sneak past the soldiers and detonate them in gasoline tank. Trust me, I'm not in that much of a hurry to die, but I don't see any other choice. Oh no, this sucks big time balls. I wish we had someone inside who could get those assholes to look the other way. Lord the gasoline tank. Fight your way in. I'll do it the hard way and see what it takes. Mm, I don't want to make Olga get hurt, but I feel like the gasoline tank is an option, so we should probably use it right now. All right, Olga. Do it. I'm going, Igor. Don't forget me. At least not for a while. I hope she didn't get killed because of that choice. We could have quite easily just fought our way through that. Hmm. There was at least five or six guys, but it would have been doable. To kill. Oh, God damn you, Igor. 
You and your suicide mission. I'm bleeding like a slaughtered pig. Holga! What's going on? Talk to me! All I see is blood. Oh, shit. I think I'm dying. Hold on, Olga. Don't give up. It's too late for me. I, I just finished the mission. Don't screw this up, Kimonook. Olga! Olga, can you hear me? Oh, no! Okay, I knew that would happen. Let's reload. All right, so now we're going to fight our way in because I want everyone in the team to survive. It would be a crime if one person dies now. There's no other choice. Can we stealth it? He's Hang just standing. Engage your will. We cannot stealth. Oh, hello. There's blood on your hands, Igor. You didn't prepare well enough. Your companion's demise is on you alone, Igor. This could have been prevented if you'd have prepared better. Oh. Olivier! Oh! No! Olivier! Damn, damn it. it, damn it. Oh. I literally can't oh. Olivier, we no. have to help him! Did everyone die? No, we still got Mikel. Okay, I think I think I'm gonna reload again. Interesting that we got rebuked by Katiana for not dealing with it properly, but Olga died if we made the other decision. There's no other choice that we could have made. So it makes me think maybe we could save Olga even though she's technically beaten to death. I don't know. And that was our first choice anyway, so. So Olga seems to have died, but I guess we'll find Everyone, out soon enough. Wait here and watch the perimeter. I have to do this alone. Here we go, we're here. We've made it. The final facility. Where Tatiana is being held. Tatiana! Finally! Pretty hot for 60 years old. Damn! Igor, my love, my child. It's been so very long, but it's finally you. It has to be you. You know it in your heart, my love. I've been calling out to you for all these years, and you answered. But how? You shouldn't be here. It's a mistake. You'll only bring great misery on us all, my poor little boy. All of us together, finally. Release me, my love. Free me. What did you call me? I don't understand. What can I do? There's nothing you can do. You have to end this. Both of us. We were a mistake. An abomination. Close the portal. Destroy the connection. W what connection? The connection is the strongest force in the universe. It cannot be destroyed. It has to be completed. It is our destiny. Go to the reactor. Find it, my love. It is waiting for you. Find what? No more waiting. Please, can't you just let me die? I can't take any more. Tanya? Go. Die. Fade. Portal. Tatiana, are you still there? Boris, help! Die, Igor! I don't understand. Oh, fuck! Reactor, Chernobylite. Well, what do I do? Oh, fuck, I need to figure this out! Hi, Igor. Happy to see me. Olivier, what are you doing? Do you really need to ask? Did you think I was an idiot right from the beginning? Put the gun down. Whatever it is, we can work it out. You are such an asshole. I've been helping you all this time. I made sacrifices. I lost my best friend just to help you find this dear old lady of yours. Olivier, please. Not once, not fucking once did you offer to help me. It was always about you. Semenov was right after all, every word. Semenov? What's he got to do with... Wait. Yes, I was working for Semenov. He hired me to keep tabs on you. 
knew it. It went pretty well until your black mask buddy went off piece and killed Anton. But Semenov, why would you work for that lunatic? What could he possibly offer? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a chance to change what cannot be changed. To go back in time and save my squad. Uh. But that's crazy. Crazy, sure. Is it any crazier than going for an interdimensional walk in a tunnel through space-time? I'm not saying it's impossible, but... But helping me was never on your agenda, was it? I should have seen it sooner. Besides, you're not the only one experiencing strange fucking things, you know. I keep having these dreams where I die. I wake up and I live again. I see our friends being killed because of your screw-ups. Then it's a new day and everything's normal again. It's motherfucking Groundhog Day in hell. What do you have to say to that? I don't know what to tell you. You're right. I just never thought anyone else would see it. I thought it was only me. Sure, sure. Semenov isn't the one with the Messiah complex. You are. But today the Messiah descends from the clouds and helps his companions, right? Like I said, it's not impossible. But this is neither the time nor the place. Not good enough, Igor. I'm serious. I'm serious too. We don't know what's behind that door. Semenov wanted me here for a reason, and it wasn't to destroy Chernobylite. So I promise you, once we see this through, I'll do everything in my power to help... Say it. To save my team. To save your team. Okay. That's good enough for me. I'm glad we understand each other. All right, I'll be back. Keep an eye on Tanya. Sure. I just hope you don't screw things up and get us all killed. Again. I'm tired of this carousel of madness. Damn, son. Now that's interesting. So we knew he was working for Semenov because he was the only person that wasn't there after we kidnapped Kazlov. But at the start of that mission, we got told that the NAR were alerted to our presence because Oliver was a traitor and informed them. So that's how I knew, you know, obviously he's a traitor, but it wasn't actually given away until now, which was quite a cool little interesting detail. I like that. But I thought it was interesting how he said that he almost spoke to us like we made lots of decision changes, which you can do with the main storyline. There's an option to go back and change your decisions. And then he was saying like he wakes up the next day and everything's changed and it obviously does affect him mentally. But we've not actually changed any decisions. We've always kept what we decided in the first place. So I almost feel like that shouldn't even be a dialogue choice he has because we never change a decision um ever so do you know what i mean i think that's the one issue i have with that conversation but other than that i thought it was really cool who knows maybe saving his squad will be the dlc and we know tatiana is kind of like a sentient being who can control the wormhole from our world to the world of chernobylite and connects the two it seems like she's got a split personality and the aliens are talking through her and trying to connect our world together for their own power as you can see they're already infecting our world um, and she is trying to stop this and would rather die i don't know if we're going to be able to save her so now we've got to go out of this room to see what we can do about the situation is mikhail still here I don't know where he went. I mean, um, Sashko, not Mikel. We took him with us. Right, this is deep Chernobylite territory now. Hello. Is that the Black Stalker? You Liz. took your time, Igor. Cut the crap. It's time you gave me some answers. Yes, we'll get to that. But since this is our last meeting, I want to ask you a question first. Fine, just make it quick. What do you really hope to achieve, Igor? State the obvious. I did everything for Tatiana. Declare that Chernobylite needs to be destroyed. This thing is obviously too dangerous to remain in, remain in human hands, especially our hands. 
Tell him you're trying to stay alive. I need to remain in one piece before I can even think about making any decisions. State the obvious. I feel like Chernobyl needs to be destroyed. I am going to obviously try and save Tatiana, but let's just go for that. Isn't that obvious? I want to save Tatiana. You may find this surprising, but our goals are actually aligned. How's that? We were both going after the same thing. But this whole time, we've been chasing someone else's agenda without knowing it. Chernobylite's agenda. Come on, man. I've come too far to be fed a line of bullshit. Let's start from the beginning. Do you know who I am? Horus. Reveal you know his name. Speculate that you're the same person. Not sure if it's a classical time to travel paradox theory. We still apply multiple dimensions. But it would explain why he couldn't kill me. Tell him you don't give a shit. I don't know and I don't care. For all I know, he's just a freak standing between me and Tatiana. I mean, we have the option to reveal his name because we already did the research and revealed all the clues that we know he's Boris. I sure do, Boris. You were my closest friend until you decided to betray me, to take Tatiana from me. Boris is dead. I killed him on that fateful night, April 26, 1986, and took his identity. Good riddance. He was a treacherous piece of shit. You took his? Why? The more important question, the question you somehow failed to ask yourself all this time is, who are you? No way. Because you're not Professor Igor Kiminyuk. You never were. I am Igor Kiminyuk. I only changed my name to protect you and your mother. Protect me? How? By trying to kill me at every turn? If I wanted to kill you, I would have done it the first time we met at the power plant. Will you quit talking in fucking riddles? The truth is hard to swallow, I know. It was hard for me too. You are me. The Chana isn't your fiance. She's mine. Everything you know about her, everything you remember, none of it is yours. You're living someone else's life. My life. You are my clone. Sort of. You got my body, my brain, my skills, and most importantly, my memories from before the Chernobyl disaster. What are you saying? How is that even possible? Tatiana was sterile. That was our personal tragedy. But when Semenov imprisoned her after the Duga fiasco, she fell pregnant. At first, I thought Boris was the father, and I was angry with her. But that was another of Semenov's lies. He needed me to stay on the project and study Chernobylite, so he injected Tanya with the nano solution. What happened next was, I don't know what to call it, an immaculate conception. She gave birth to a boy, you. You grew much more quickly than other kids, but your mind didn't seem to follow. It was different somehow. The Chernobylite no doubt affected you in unpredictable ways. I never really considered you my son. You scared the shit out of me. I didn't know what to do with you. But it was obvious that Semenov would incorporate you into his experiments. Or maybe cut you open and rummage around inside. Until one night, Tanya, your mother, communicated with me telepathically, even though her body was in a coma. She pleaded with me to release you into the woods, and that's what I did. You're saying Tachana's child, who you released in the woods in 1990? But that's impossible. Impossible! I don't remember any of this! Of course you don't. You looked like a teenager that had the mind of a small child. I remember giving you a sweater that Tachana knitted for me. The night was so cold. It had my name on it. The sweater? I had it in the camp. I was imprisoned and... Yes, it could have been a trigger. Your mind somehow began to rebuild itself. Why in my image? I can only guess. Perhaps you were constructed from Tatiana's desires, from her expectations of a child. Funny, how I called it pseudoscience. I suspect the process was somehow facilitated by the Chernobylite. But she's been calling me this whole time. She wanted me here. I'm afraid you were bamboozled, my poor boy. We all were. It wasn't Tanya who called you here, but it. Chernobylite? But the images, 
The voices. They felt so real, I know. Your mother was your biggest weakness. And the entity exploited that. It wanted you here. It has plans for you, you see. And I cannot allow it to succeed. Someone sent me a photo of Tatjana and the piece of Chernobylite. Those weren't hallucinations. They were real. I couldn't have constructed my portal gun without them. Oh, that. It was that bastard Semenov, of course. He wanted to bring you here as well. He never got over it when you vanished. Not that it matters now. I really hoped you would stay away. But it's too late now. I can't allow you to interact with the Entity in any way. Only one of us is leaving this room alive. Wait. Can't we talk it over? We just did. Goodbye, son. Igor. I wish there was another way. What? Oh, I see. And then the boss battle proceeds. A very good plot twist I didn't see coming. Someone in the comments actually mentioned, though, the Black Stalker sounds exactly like Igor. And then I was kind of like, oh, maybe they're the same voice actor. Maybe they can afford to like hire someone else or something because it's such a small indie dev team. Clearly, that was intentional. That was just like almost your voice, but slightly disrupted. And the fact you're working with Semenov as well is very interesting. But obviously, we're going to now kill the Black Stalker. What he's saying about Tatiana does make sense, though. She does seem to have a split personality. It's two people talking to her. It's exploiting us almost so i do believe this okay here we go there's three of them let's use this to scan our environment here what's in here ammo there's lots of ammo oh we've got ak ammo we should definitely use the don't go easy on me i won't do the same for you I won't let you hurt her. Oh, Jesus. This gives me no pleasure. Oh, my God. Done. He irradiates you as well as does health damage. It seems like he spawns around me. All three of them at once. So I guess the more duplicates we can wipe out the easier this battle's going to be to survive. Don't go easy on me. We've got to keep I moving and not let them hit us with a plasma. Right, I think we got one down. What is this? Oh, molecular batteries for the rail rifle gun. I'm making this too easy, son. No ow, it has ow, to ow. Be done. We're gonna have to have some anti rads. Come on, show me the new and improved Eagle coming up. Jesus Christ. Let's have a healing med kit. Ow, ow, ow. You think you're better than me? There's one duplicate left, so this must be the final phase. Don't go easy on me. I won't do the same for you. You're making this too easy, son. Oh, Jesus. Let's quickly have some more anti rads. Uh oh. Jesus Christ. Definitely just stick to the AK man. He's almost down. Are they dead? <sighs> New and improved Igor, eh? Did I shoot him? 
I feel like we have a choice to shoot him or not here. What happens if we don't shoot him? Is he killing me? Oh. Failed to defeat you. Ooh. Olivier saved our life. I told you to watch Tanya. How on earth did you get in here? Focus, Igor. Look familiar? Where did you get that from? Where else? I took it from you. From your cold, dead hands, Igor. I... A dot? What? Where? When? In a reality where you fucked up, my friend. From one of the many worlds bearing the brunt of your failures. Are you saying that you come from a different... That you're from... <sighs> this is hell. You have no idea. Where are you going? Back to my screwed up world, of course. You know me. I'd prefer to die fighting. Wait! Don't waste the chance I've given you, Igor. Finish the job. Dude, this is amazing. This is all the plot twists and fantastic. Like, it actually makes sense when you have, like, a game that meshes with space and time. Like, damn, I love it. Really enjoying the ending. It's so satisfying. Let's see how we go next, though. Tanya's here and the Black Stalker. Which is us. If I kill myself in another reality, does that mean I die? I don't know. It's over, my son. Close the portal. Cut the connection. Deny this thing away into our world. Do it now. Son, please. It will kill her. It will kill the love of my life. Of our life. Please. There's another way. Just let me go. I've suffered long enough. You can do this, son. You can be the man I could not. Be the better version of me. Go through the portal and face this thing. Undo the harm we both caused Tanya. No. Do not do this. Kill me. Just kill me, please. Finish it. Destroy the portal or travel through the portal. Travel through the portal or descend to hell. If that's what it takes to save Tatiana. Or destroy the portal. I've been so selfish. I can't let Tatiana suffer any longer. I feel like we have to try both options here. But I'm going to travel through the portal first. So there's a chance of saving her. It could be a bait there. It seems like a trap. But there could be a possibility to save her. Let's go. shot of adrenaline would have saved my ass. Why didn't you give it to me, you cheap fuck? So these are alternate realities of things that could have happened. My life was in your hands and you let me die. I mean, we didn't let you die, though. We know the truth. We were partners, old timer. I always had your back. Why didn't you have mine? This is the reality where we failed. Taking care of us was your job. You let me die. You failed. I mean, I feel like we did let Olga die, so that's that was fair enough. That's on us. The eulogy you gave at my funeral was awful. Pure A drivel. How can you sleep at night, Mansi? <laughs> Bro in the BM. I trusted you. You were supposed to save us all. Wow, that didn't go too well, did it? You killed Kostya, you motherfucker! My Kostya! I didn't kill him, he killed himself. Why? Why did you betray me, Mousy? This is like the worst possible outcome for everything. After everything I've done for you, you chose NAR? Burn in hell, you bastard! 
backstabbing little freak! This is so cool. Executing an unarmed prisoner like a common thug. I expected more from you, Professor Kaminiuk. Would have done that one again, though. This, this isn't possible. These things can't all have happened. I fixed them. You've got at least some of them. You're wrong. Did you think meddling with space-time wouldn't have consequences? All of this, every bit of it, happened. But how? I was going back through the wormholes. I was fixing everything. There is no time travel the way your friend Olivier understands it. You can never change what's already occurred, because every change creates its own space-time continuum. And time only moves in one direction. Entropy. Every time you make or unmake a decision, you twist an entire dimension. It's because you are a part of me, made from the same multi-dimensional stuff. But I just wanted to save Tatiana. Yes, your mother. And along the way, you destroyed countless lives across dozens of dimensions. All because of animal body chemistry. Because of the human need to connect with your progenitor. So, here I am. I am your real mother. I don't like the sound of that, guys. But interestingly, we didn't actually change any choices. It doesn't seem like there's a separate sort of ending for that. From Chernobylite. There we go. What are you? Chernobylite? I am God. Bullshit. There is no God. But it's a matter of perspective. To a spider under your boot, you surely are a god. Isn't that so, Igor? Don't call me that. I'm not... Ah, oh, fuck. Having a bit of an identity crisis? As a poet once said, the child is the father of the man. The fear that clouds your mind is what makes your situation irreconcilable. Fear? No. I'm not afraid of... The fear of discovering there is nothing at the core of your persona but pure chaos. You simultaneously are and are not you. But don't worry, I am about to reveal the truth. After that, it won't matter anymore. What do you want from me? Have you ever wondered why, despite your technological sophistication, you People so insistently pursue self-destruction? Why destroy your own ecosystem? Why you cannot help but slaughter each other and every other species? Why, over and over again, you sacrifice your own future for short-term gain? If you're thinking to catch me off guard with your freshman philosophy insights, you've got another thing coming. People are, for the most part, selfish assholes. I don't need an alien entity to tell me this. So what's next? Are you going to propose some kind of new world order to save us all? Am I to be your prophet and help you usher in a comic book utopia? I never expected you to be so nihilistic, but I suppose it isn't surprising. No, a new world order isn't enough to save you from yourselves. You are fundamentally flawed. Is that right? And why is that? Again, it's the fear. Fear of your own existence. Fear of anything strange or other. Fear about the future. I can take it all away. I can help you as I've helped many other civilizations before. How? Your kind can only live in the moment. The future is terrifying to you. It makes you do silly, destructive things. <laughs> Surely you can see that now. Become my vessel, and I will purify them of fear and weakness. I will remake mankind in my image, burn away the dross in a firestorm the world has never seen. I must reduce everything to ashes so they can be reborn. That is some insane 
biblical shit. If you're scared, this will make you feel less special, less of a hero. This is what being a hero is all about. You went on a quest to heal the world, to find a cure. I am the cure. We can banter words for as long as you want. I have plenty of time. But the result is inevitable. You and I are already connected at the core. You cannot exist without me. Struggling against me will only tire you. It will not in the slightest change the outcome. You're like a fish, endlessly swimming the circumference of a wash basin. You want to jump out, but without me, you simply can't. All your science cannot help you. It's time to set aside this futile struggle. Help yourself and the world. Embrace me. Commune with Chernobylite. This is my only chance to rescue Tatiana to help humanity. Reject it. I have to sacrifice myself to save humanity and Tatiana from this thing, so be it. Reject it. I see you have it all figured out, my love. But it's not going to happen. I refuse to take part. If mankind wants to destroy itself, let it. For all I know, extinction is a better fate than becoming part of whatever you are. You are defiant, like her. But as I said, we can do this forever. For eternity. I can have you wake back up at your base again and again. In the end, you will always return to me. It is a circle. A circle? Of course! <laughs> oh, don't get distracted with your theories now. You have no choice. We belong together. <laughs> I almost fell for it. But something betrayed you. You omitted one detail, a detail that makes you vulnerable. Me! I'm your only hope, and this also makes me your biggest weakness. You cannot exist without me. I made you. Everything you are is because of me. True, but you also cannot exist in this plane without me. You're no god. You're just a fucking parasite. A freeloader looking for a new host, hoping to get a foothold in a new environment. Tanya, my mom, is no longer a viable option for you. You can't use her anymore. Who knows? Perhaps you never needed her in the first place. And all this was a ruse to bring me back to you. <sighs> you don't even know what you are. You have no identity. You don't exist without me. Now obey! Identity. Yes. Perhaps I'm Igor. Perhaps I'm Igor's son. Perhaps I'm both. Maybe I'm just a faulty copy of a dead physicist. But it doesn't matter. I make my own choices. And that brings us neatly to my conclusion. As a scientist, I must test this theory before I can confirm or deny it. So watch closely, my love. This is my final experiment. It's time to break the circle and destroy the parasite by denying it a host. Kill myself. No! 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 Very effective. Dude, that was a sick ending! I broke the circle. The protagonist never returned from the power plant. That, that was one of the endings. The Chernobylite vanished entirely. The zone is now free of it. We saved the world. The hero's death. Igor Stalkers drove off the remaining NAR troops and even convinced a few of them to join the cause. This is like the best ending. Now they're working together for the good of the sandwich shells, tracking down the few remaining monsters still roaming the area. We ha had a whole team all the way through it. Olivier never had the chance to change his own history and prevent the ambush that wiped out his team. Igor's example convinced him to abandon his plan and accept his flawed past. 
That tragedy, after all, made him the man he was. With time, he made his peace and, in the end, was grateful to be part of something bigger than himself. Wow. That's great. Once the events in the zone were finished, he sought out Anton's fiance and took care of both her and her daughter. Wow. Like you said. In spite of his flaws, Olivier will always be remembered in the zone for his courage and grit. Legend. Mikhail's life was always full of violence. He was the angriest, most obnoxious man Igor had ever known, but he was also unfailingly honest, both with himself and others. Mikhail's thirst to avenge his murdered friends was his main driving force, but working with Igor and the others eventually made him appreciate the kinder aspects of life. In spite of his rough manner and the darkness inside him, Igor came to like the neurotic stalker, and by the end, considered him a true colleague. He was the best character. Mikhail decided to remain in the zone and join the others in protecting their shared home. Sashko had always been the lone wolf and daredevil of the zone. Life had always been harsh for him, and he learned the hard way to rely only on himself. His crusade against NAR began with a desire for closure regarding his brother Ruslan's death, but Igor's quest to find Tatiana was what kept him going until the finish line. After the events in the zone, Sashko decided to go back to Moscow and face the hard truth about his parents' death. Eventually, he would return to Pripyat, which became his second home. Cool. He never found out about his brother. Tarakan's fight against the Rat King has reached an end. Having barely survived the zone, he realized his time was up. Now, someone else must carry the torch and defeat the evil lurking in the power plant. But Tarakan wasn't worried. After all, he had prepared Igor and others well. Cool story. Tarakan's true identity was never discovered. Was he a madman, a saint, a spy? Perhaps he was all of these, or perhaps none of them. I wonder if you could find out who he was. But one thing is certain, the old man was a true child of Pripyat. His restless soul will forever wander its marshes and woods. Olga's last thoughts were with her mother and those Samoshils. She had joined Igor in his mission because she knew what it meant to live with a hole inside you, a hole left by the departed. As a troubled teenager in Minsk, she'd never planned to become a freedom fighter or martyr, but sometimes we encounter the person who will change our destiny at just the right moment. Life is unpredictable that way. Olga will always be in the hearts of all the Samoshils whose lives she touched. Like so many before him, General Koslov made the wrong choices while chasing a dream of the good life. War taught him about the cruelty and inevitability of loss, leaving him indifferent to human suffering. His experiences made him strong, but also blind to the serendipitous moments which could have placed his life on a different trajectory. And so his death was as empty as his life. General Koslov spent his final moments consumed with bitterness. If I only had another chance, he said to himself. Alas, that is a privilege afforded to very few. Semenov's ambitions and neuroses eventually got him killed. Yep. He was a brilliant scientist, but could never come to terms with the collapse of the Soviet Union. <laughs> Though not that a devout communist, Semenov could not stomach the chaotic aftermath, for it reflected the emptiness of his own heart. And so he chased his green Chernobylite dream, hoping his experiments would usher in a new world order. 
Almost dead. In reality, what he sought was to fill the gaping void in his own soul. In the end, everything he thought he had achieved disintegrated into nothing. He died, and NAR dissolved. Most of its mercenaries wiped out by either the shadows or the Samoshiels. All that remains of NAR in the zone are the empty barracks and derelict labs, stark reminders of a misguided ambition based on human misery. Faced with staggering losses, the shareholders halted all funding. <laughs> Oof. Broken the cycle, achievement unlocked. Now we've got to quickly go back and have a look at the other ending if we joined her to see how that ending changed. That was a very Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3 ending with the summary. Absolutely loved it. I thought this game was fantastic. We've got to reload. I've not played a game this satisfying in a long time. So this time we're going to destroy the portal here and then we'll see what happens if we join the tree. It's time to end this once and for all. If anyone can hear me, run as far from here as you can. Everyone, run like hell. So once again, we destroy ourselves. Maybe some people on our team too. Can we run away? Can I use this? Can I get out of here? It's too late to go back. Can we get out of here? Oh, we can run out! How many enemies are we going to come across, though? Oh, what's this? Tatiana. Thank you for showing me the way. I won't waste this, I promise. Goodbye. You can rest now. The protagonist never explained to his comrades exactly what happened at the power plant, but he came out changed. That's a change. We lived through it. The Chernobylite vanished entirely. The zone is now free of it. So the Chernobylite still vanished? Interesting, but we didn't break the circle, did we? Because technically there are still Eco alternate Stars realities. So the rest of the ender, the rest of the ending is the same. But what's interesting there is that I'm not sure if we broke the cycle. The Chernobylite still vanished, but did it vanish from this reality, or was there another reality that that would mean the Chernobylite could still take over the world? So we didn't get an achievement for making that choice. Let's go ahead and make the other decision of joining the tree. So this time we're going to commune with it. This is my only chance to rescue Tatiana. Can we rescue her? I see. Maybe it's time humanity gets another chance at being its best self. I feel like this is for the worst of the world, though. This is a terrible decision, I think. No one will ever know the protagonist's ultimate fate. We did not save Tatiana then, essentially. When he disappeared, a wave of monsters poured into our world through the interdimensional gate, turning Pripyat into a permanent war zone. The inhabitants of the zone gathered everyone who could fight and resist them as best they can. Wow, the end of the world. They will never abandon the zone, for it has become their home. They still hope Igor will return one day and help them in their struggle. The Chernobylite meanwhile spreads farther into the zone, and the fight grows more desperate with every passing day. He wiped out everyone. So that was our full playthrough of Chernobylite. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Before you go, please do leave a like and even subscribe with the bell icon if you really enjoyed it and want to watch future Let's Plays. The only mission we missed, I just went and checked the achievements, was Hard Truth, which actually played off stream. And essentially, it's what happens if you don't kill Kazlov and you let him live and there's another mission that happens and you actually find out in that mission that oliver is a traitor 
um because keslov tells you but your companions don't like it if you let keslov live it's kind of interesting it opens up the story you kind of see that oliver's been spying on you you can confront him about it and you get a decision to kick him out of your team or not after you deal with keslov so i feel like that was an interesting narrative as well um but i'm kind of glad we killed him early because it meant that we kept the full team together and didn't have anyone else leave the party and then we got to do the heist mission with everyone there and everyone survived until the end. So that was a really cool play for I just I love the ending. It really blew my mind like it, it. I've not had an ending that good that really satisfied me in a while. So I I love this game. I thought it was fantastic. It has its issues with optimization and the AI not being great. But I can really look past that because I just enjoyed the gameplay and the campaign and all the, the management systems. It was a very unique spin on the post-apocalypse gaming franchise a lot of people were like oh it's very similar to stalker or fallout and then when you actually play it it's like you know it's really its own thing and something unique that the developers have created here so fantastic game truly i really enjoyed it you can grab it from the link below if you want uh, it's only 30 dollars or 23 pounds i'm not sponsored or anything to to tell you this game's good or whatever um, I just went into it open-minded and actually invested all my time into like, live streaming and playing it through with you guys, which I thoroughly enjoyed doing. Um, the previous episodes are below if you have missed them, but you probably have watched them by this point. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. And don't forget to try out Surfshark for yourself from the link below. Thanks again for watching.